minutes ago. Is it going up? Did it go down and did it go up? What is the trend? I need to give some more drug for pain. When did I last give it? So I can figure out when the next dose is necessary. It's absolutely part of providing competent care to keep a record of what you're doing. Additionally, you sometimes learn things after the fact. A patient might wake up with some sort of unusual reaction. What caused it? You need to go back to the record and see what you did to know why this patient had an unusual reaction. So even after the case, the medical record is fundamental to the delivery of healthcare and to the delivery of any type of sedation. You talk about it being actually a responsibility yes. to the patient. What yes. do you mean by that? This goes beyond that. This, I believe, is an unconscionable violation. Why, is, why do I say unconscionable? What does this have to do with ethics? If Michael Jackson had a bad experience, I don't know what, but a day later he says, I had a bad experience, Dr. Murray, what did you do to me? He has a right to know what was done to him. He has a right to see what the doctor did to him the night before. And with no medical record, he is being denied his right to know what happened to him. On the other hand, if Michael Jackson should not survive, the family has a right to know what happened to him. And with no medical record, the family has been denied that right. May I give an example? Please. Think about how you would feel if... Well, phrase it in a different way as opposed to speaking directly. I'm sorry, my apologies. Uh, frame it in a different fashion. The last little comment starting with uh, think how you would feel is stricken. Disregard. Yeah, my apologies, Your Honor. I know how I would feel if my father, my brother, or my son went to a medical facility and was there for 80 days and died. And at the end of 80 days, I said, what happened? He died. And they said, we don't know. We don't have any records of what we did. It is unbelievable that after, with 80 days of treatment, there is not a single record showing the treatment that happened on any given night. And I know how I would feel in the setting of having a family member die, and I can't be told what they did to my family member. The patient's family has a right, and that right was violated by the lack of records. And that is why this is an unconscionable violation. Lastly, it is a legal violation, I believe. There is a requirement under California state law to keep records. In regard to the both the, both the egregious and ethically unconscionable violation uh, regarding these medical records, I want to ask you a follow-up question, and that is what if uh, what if the patient says, Doctor, I don't want you to keep records? What is the doctor's obligation in that scenario? To keep records. No question. The doctor has to keep records. And who dictates that requirement, that responsibility? The patient or the doctor? That responsibility is dictated by the covenant that exists between the doctor and the patient that the doctor will put the patient first, and that requires keeping medical records. It is something that all doctors learn, and as mentioned, it's also enshrined in law. There is no basis to say I didn't keep records to protect confidentiality. That's just completely false. Now, you've mentioned the need for medical records in regard to uh, the patient, this case being Michael Jackson, that Michael Jackson's family having the right to learn that information. Uh, is it also used for subsequent 
uh, health care providers and things of that nature. Absolutely. Let us. Absolutely is the answer. The other phrase is stricken disregard. You may ask to follow up, Mr. Walden. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. In this case, uh, Dr. Schaefer, the uh, lack of medical records, the lack of medical records that could have been provided to the paramedics or to UCLA, um, how is that seen in your point of view in evaluating the standard of care? In his testimony, Dr. Murray raises the possibility that Michael oh, Excuse me. Uh, you mean in his statement? In his interview. All right, thank you. The, the first sorry. part is stricken. Start over, please. Thank you, sorry. In his interview, Dr. Murray makes specific reference to the possibility of opioid, pardon, possibility of sedative dependency. Maybe Michael Jackson is becoming dependent on propofol. A responsible thing to do might be to refer Michael Jackson to another doctor. Part of that referral includes making Michael Jackson's medical records available. But there are no medical records. So that care is impaired. And Dr. Murray's ability to make a referral is impaired because he can provide no documentation. Additionally, the state has the right to inspect medical records because the state licenses doctors and the state is responsible for auditing the care that doctors provide. But there are no medical records. So the lack of medical records, um, it, it's, it's such a profound violation. And it's, it's the, it's the real-time records. It is the, all the, it's everything. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's no excuse for it. And the notion that this has anything to do with patient privacy is utterly false. Now, I, I want to take you then to your opinion regarding Conrad Murray's obligation or responsibility to review and obtain information from other health care providers. Uh, you've reviewed uh, Dr. Murray's interview statement? That is correct. Where he acknowledges uh, being aware of other doctors uh, that may be treating Michael Jackson? That is correct. What is a doctor's obligation or responsibility uh, in order to competently treat a patient as it relates to obtaining prior information? Doctors have a responsibility to know everything about their patient and to follow up on this information as it might affect the care of the patient. So it's described in Dr. Murray's interview that Michael Jackson was, had, had difficult intravenous access because maybe he was getting some sort of treatments, but that was not followed up on. It's hard for me as a physician to imagine taking care of a patient every night, seeing evidence of other doctors providing therapy and not saying what is going on. And that's part of informed consent. What is going on? I need to know what's going on. If I'm taking care of you, I need to know what's happening. Why are these, uh, why are you running out of veins? What do I need to know about here? But that was not done. And, and that is a violation in the standard of care. And what if the patient said, that's none of your business. I'm not going to tell you what the other doctors are doing. What is your obligation? My obligation is to put the patient first. If the patient says, I'm going to get other kinds of therapy, I'm not going to tell you about them, I would have to say, in that case, I cannot be your doctor. Now, you, you talked about, in, when we watched the video, about the uh, pre-assessment of the patient um, and the need to do that before each individual time before administering IV sedatives. Can you describe 
that requirement and your findings or opinions in that regard as it applies to this case? Yes. And <laughs> in this case, after reviewing all the evidence and the, the interview statement and the, the medical records, what did you find and what is your opinion? What I found is that the only reference to a physical examination and medical evaluation of Michael Jackson had been done months before these nightly infusions of propofol. That is not acceptable. There's even statements that Michael Jackson might have been dehydrated. Why would you not measure the blood pressure and the pulse? At a minimum, if you think the patient might have been exercising so hard, not eating right, sweating a lot, that they might be seriously dehydrated. But this was not done. There is no evidence that there was an assessment of Michael Jackson. Other things you might ask would be, do you feel tired? Do you feel like you, uh, what's your mental status? Are you, are you pumped up from what you've been doing? Uh, is there anything else? Are you, have you been hungry? Have you been nauseated? But there, there's no history at all. There's no evidence that there was a discussion of the medical condition each night or a simple recording of the vital signs prior to infusing propofol. No physician does that. And you found that to be a serious violation in the standard of care? Yes. Now I want to talk about what you found in your report and your findings regarding the failure to maintain a doctor-patient uh, relationship. And you noted that to be an independent, uh, egregious violation of the standard of care, correct? Yes. Uh, describe the, what is the doctor-patient relationship first? The doctor-patient relationship is a relationship that is built on the foundation that the doctor will put the patient's interests first at Columbia University Medical Center. Four words, we put patients first. That is the whole basis of the doctor-patient relationship. That does not mean doing what the patient asks. It means doing what is right for the patient. It means using your medical judgment to provide the care that the, is in the best interest of the patient. And if the patient should request something that is foolish or dangerous, it is the doctor's obligation to use their medical judgment and say no. Because that's what doctors do. They bring their judgment with them in every dialogue with the patient, and they will not place a patient at risk or engage in some reckless activity at the patient's request. May I comment on what I think the relationship was? Yes, and I want to follow up. You, you did indicate in your report uh, that you would characterize the relationship between Conrad Murray and Michael Jackson as not one of a doctor-patient, but one of uh, employer-employee. And I wanted to ask you what you meant by that and how did that play a role in this context? When I read the documentation for this case, what I saw was a patient who stated what he wanted. I want this, I want this, I want this. And I saw that Conrad Murray said, yes, tell me what you want, I'll do it. That is what an employee does. So Michael Jackson, it seems, said, I want propofol. And I want propofol every night to go to sleep. And Conrad Murray said, yes. And that is what an employee does. And I do not see the difference between Conrad Murray saying yes to the request that Michael Jackson is making and a person who cleans the house saying yes to a request that Michael Jackson is making. Because he is acting 